Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video I'll be looking at what type of medieval weapons would elves really use if they actually existed. And sorry if that is news to you, elves don't actually exist. Or of course I could just be a muggle and don't know the actual truth. The first thing that we need to establish are what are the physical characteristics of elves, and this one was actually a bit harder to figure out as opposed to dwarves. And even then there was a lot of debate in regards to dwarves if they are physically stronger than humans or not. Well, in in regards to elves, it really does depend on what type of fantasy because they can vary greatly. The elves from Lord of the Rings are nearly godlike kind of creatures. Okay, maybe not godlike, but being fully immortal and having no other real physical negatives make these type of elves very formidable. Yet the elves from classic Dungeons and Dragons, and like if we look at 3 and 3.5, elves are considered more graceful and agile yet more frail, but more modern incarnations of Dungeons and Dragons just have them being very graceful, particularly graceful, and having no real physical detriments. So this is going to be a little bit tricky for me to make a call on, but there are at least uh, there is at least one thing that nearly every fantasy, or at least most of them, uh, agree on in regards to elves, and that is that they have very good eyesight. So that is then on the list. Elves, one of the key char physical characteristics they have, good eyesight. Okay, what about their physicality? Well, again, this is tricky. I think generally we can all say that elves are uh, more naturally graceful than humans, and that can go into being more agile. But the question of strength and hardiness or constitution, that is, this is a very difficult one. In a general sense, from the varying works that I've been able to enjoy, whether that is RPG video games, movies, really any type of fantasy world, Generally, elves are not depicted as being significantly physically weaker than humans. But in regards to how they are visually represented, on that side of things, they are generally shown to being far slimmer than humans. Not in all cases, alright, that you can come across images of totally ripped and buff elves. My response to that is, can you find any images of Arnold Schwarzenegger level elves? They are far more rare. Why? Because there is a visual imagery associated with elves. Elves look a certain way in our mind. Now, if I was to make a decision based on how elves are represented visually, I would say this is a race that does look to be physically weaker than humans. Pure physics would indicate this. Body mass has a lot of correlation with physical strength. What's interesting about this is that the lore of these fantasy worlds don't generally correlate or marry in with how elves are visually represented, because in the lore they are generally shown to have equivalent strength. On the most part, there are cases where, they, like in Dungeons Dragons 3 and 3.5, they'll say they are less physically sturdy and more susceptible to damage, which is a, a weird concept anyway, because resistance to injury also has a very strong correlation with physical strength. Still, on the most part, in the lore of these fantasy worlds, elves are represented to having equivalent strength. And this is very easily answered in fantasy, because this is what fantasy is. You can rewrite certain genetic principles because these races are fictional. Therefore, it's easy to say that elven muscle mass is actually of greater density than humans and other races, and as a result, an elf that looks to be far slimmer than a human would actually have equivalent strength because their muscles actually can produce higher levels of strength for smaller overall volume because of density. So then, of course, I'm going to go with the lore of these fantasy worlds rather than just the visual looks and what we can infer from it. Now, there are other things, and of course, there are so many different interpretations of what elves are, and also different sub-races of elves. What about high elves compared to wood elves and dark elves or drows? Or sun elves or moon elves or whatever fantasy elf that it exists in other, you know, fantasy properties. I really am just trying to find what the general features are, and so if there are elves that are completely different to what the standard fantasy elf is, well of course I'm not considering that. And the standard physical characteristics of the fantasy elf are better eyesight, they can see farther and also have better perception in noticing things that might be camouflaged and whatnot, and they are more graceful and agile. Those are the two main physical characteristics, and I think we can settle that they are not physically weaker or stronger than humans. There are also other physical properties that these other interpretations of elves can have. Some elves are shorter in certain fantasy things. D&D, they're shorter, yet in Warhammer they're taller, as I understand it. As this is an analysis of what type of weapons would best suit elves according to their physical characteristics, I'm not really going to be considered their extensively long lifespans, or that they are more inclined to magic, because this is an analysis of melee combat, or just sorry, medieval combat. Okay, better eyesight and more graceful and agile, with no other real uh, detriments physically. This is very significant, okay, because unlike the dwarves, who have a huge limitation because of their height, elves 
basically get no limitations as opposed to humans, and instead get benefits on top of it. They're basically humans plus, they're superhumans. Makes it very unfair. Personally, in my fantasies, I like any bonus or benefit to be balanced off by a as significant a detriment or limitation to balance it out. And in some fantasies, with elves there are, but generally, no, elves just seem to be always superior to humans. No wonder they can act so stuck up and self-righteous. I'm looking at you, Legolas. Oh, just because you can turn a troll into a remote-controlled device through stabbing him in the back of the neck? That makes you just so wonderful, doesn't it? Alright, maybe it does, but it's a bit of a Mary Sue, okay? Well, like I said, these are quite significant. In general, there wouldn't be any uh, changed weapon sets uh, that the elves would need to rely upon to compensate for any limitations, so they have the full breadth of the medieval weapons that generally humans would feel inclined to based on whatever circumstances they are in. Battlefield weapons for battlefield, sidearms for self-defense and other things like that. And what other kind of battlefield weapons? You know, pikes, halberds, armor combating weapons if they're fighting, you know, opponents in heavy armor and things like that. Two-handed weapons if they themselves are wearing heavy armor and that can be pole arms or large swords or whatever. If they're not wearing heavy armor, they would want a shield and one-handed weapons. Adventuring kind of changes things up and I actually do have a video on what weapon sense I feel or are my personal preferences for these different combative circumstances that someone might find themselves in in a medieval setting or even medieval fantasy setting. Adventuring, war and self-defense. So if you want more detail on my thoughts on that, please go watch that video so I can save time here. Now, with generally the same weapon sets available, are there any certain weapon sets that would be better suited for elves because of their advantages? Well, let's have a look at that and we'll start with the range category. Traditionally, elves are phenomenal archers and they love archery. Well, this traditionally favoured weapon actually does make a bit of sense, but there's a bit of, you know, interesting things to consider in regards to this, and what I'm referring to is the elven superior eyesight that they possess. Would this make them inherently better archers? Well, it's interesting. After thinking about it in depth, they would certainly gain benefits out of having really good eyesight. But if you were to compare an elf to a human, and they are, you know, they have a target which uh, both can see in perfectly adequate clarity, just because the elf can see the target in greater detail and all the finer details, doesn't necessarily mean the elf would have better chances of hitting that target if the human can see the target accurate or clearly enough. You see, accuracy at long range in this, you know, context has more to do with holding the weapon steadily, okay, and predicting the arc of the projectile than seeing the target with greater sharpness. So long as standard vision isn't blurry, standard human vision would be sharp enough for the ranges that bows shoot in with accuracy. Having said that, elves would make wonderful archers at night time because they have better chances of actually seeing the people they need to shoot as opposed to humans where when it's particularly dark and you, you just can't see who you're shooting at, well you're at a bit of a disadvantage aren't you? Also elves with their greater eyesight and perception would be able to notice targets that are trying to go unseen easier than humans would be able to notice them, which also gives them another advantage, but this is mainly just in finding the target, not necessarily hitting the target once it is seen. So would these advantages inherently encourage elves to pick up the bow more than other weapons? You know, I kind of think they would. If an elf is on guard duty and they know that they have a much better chance at spotting the enemy than the enemy has of spotting them because of their enhanced eyes, well then, being able to pick off those enemies at a distance would be a very significant advantage. So for any type of elf on any type of scout patrolling guard duty, I really do feel the bow would be their go-to weapon. And because elves have equivalent strength to humans, as they are most commonly represented, they would be able to handle the heavier poundage of bows. When we're talking war bow levels, which is the strength of bows you would want when fighting monsters and any other humanoid opponent with moderate levels of armor. This is a significant point, because if elves didn't have equivalent strength to humans and they were actually a bit weaker as what they appear to be visually, the bow wouldn't be the best pick for them because the bow is a weapon that requires strength, especially war bows. War bows are very much strength based weapons and I would find it very hard to visualize a whole army of elves armed with war bows if they were physically weaker than humans. Elves would gain an advantage in archery due to them being more uh, agile or dexterous. Are graceful? Yes they might because it does take a decent amount of coordination to be able to draw an arrow, knock it and fire it in a very fast motion. So they could get gain benefit from their natural
natural grace and coordination in that sense. But in terms of accuracy with archery, no, agility, grace doesn't play any role in it. Perception, calculation of arcs and trajectories and such, also strength and conditioning, those are the characteristics that play the larger roles in a being good at archery. With all these things in mind, I can see elven scouts and such favouring archery over other types of weapons. It plays into their natural eyesight. As to all elven warriors, you know, across the board being great archers, no, they would not be inherently more accurate than humans. Not according to these general benefits that elves seem to possess. But that doesn't mean the elven race or culture wouldn't favour the bow. There can be many cultural reasons that could have created this preference. Just like what we saw in medieval England with the classic English longbowmen. The English weren't inherently better archers due to physical characteristics than any other types of people on earth, but they favour the types of tactics that archery in warfare gave, and so they practised it a lot. It was a very cultural thing. And so for those reasons, I could see archery becoming so favoured amongst elves for cultural reasons, not necessarily physical characteristics, even though they would gain certain benefits in terms of scouting and spotting the enemy because of their eyesight, and perhaps a slightly higher firing rate due to their increased coordination. Okay, that is a ranged weapon category. What about melee weapons? Are there any type of weapon sets that elves would be inclined towards because of their physical characteristics? Better eyesight, more graceful and agile. This is interesting because in reality, any type of combat requires coordination, and in that sense, grace. And if elves are naturally more graceful, more coordinated than humans, they would inherently be better fighters. If they don't have any other limitations like strength, yeah, elves would be naturally better fighters than humans. Stop looking so smug, Legolas. We know you stare at yourself in the reflection for two hours a day. So this advantage in being naturally more coordinated, graceful, and agile than humans, yes, it really would be beneficial for any type of of, uh, combat, medieval style combat. There is a style of combat, okay, a weapon set that has existed historically, but was rarely used. In fact, it was really, it was, we don't see any sources of this weapon set or style being used on the battlefield. Probably it was done, all right? History was a long time and there's a lot of people live there, but we don't have any accounts. But there are some accounts of this weapon style being used in jewels. One of the reasons that uh, certain modern swordsmen, swords people who study the art, have postulated as to why this combat type wasn't as prevalent as people might have supposed in history is because it is difficult, awkward, and requires quite a bit of coordination to fight effectively. What weapon set am I referring to? I am referring to dual wielding using two identical weapons in each hand. Sometimes it can switch up, but you have to understand, dual wielding was done to in larger prevalence if, if weapons were, uh, well, what I'm referring to is rapier and dagger. Rapier and dagger is the most prevalent dual wielding weapon style that has existed in history. Mostly it was for dueling, though of course it could have been used in combat. But the thing is, if you took it into real battlefield combat, you would be wearing a lot of armor or a shield in your hand and you wouldn't be using a dagger. Rapier and dagger really is a dueling weapon set. Having said that though, there are some depictions in treatises that show rapier and rapier, two rapiers in each hand in jewels. Still, it wasn't prevalent. Why? Like I said, for the same reasons that, has, that have already been postulated. It is actually a bit more awkward to fight with two rapiers than it is with a rapier and dagger. One of the main reasons is that the long blades can often tangle and hit each other because they're so long. Also, when people dual wield, they generally focus on one thing at a time. Yes, they can do double attacks, but it requires a very large amount of coordination, and usually they'll use one hand for offense and one hand or weapon for defense. This actually does limit the versatility in dual wielding because with proper dual wielding you should be able to use each hand equally effectively for offense or defense increasing the versatility but it's very hard to have that level of coordination and it also requires a high level of ambidexterity to do that. Hence one of the reasons among other reasons we can postulate why dual wielding wasn't as common as you might think in history. But if elves have greater grace coordination and reflexes, that leads me to believe they would be able to pick up and fight more effectively dual wielding than the average human would be able to. And there is some significant advantages that you can get out of dual wielding. It can work pretty well. And I am not talking about dual wielding daggers, all right? When I say dual wielding, I'm referring to two weapons of appropriate combat size. So arming sword length weapons. 
And while we're on the subject of daggers, let me just address something, because it does seem that daggers are quite popular amongst elves in many fantasy settings and such. Well, let me just say that the myth that fantasy and pop culture action movies have promoted, that a person can use daggers and fight uh, you know, on an equal level to anyone who is using larger weapons, like a proper sized arming sword length style weapon, that is complete bollocks. In real life, if you are using a dagger and you're fighting someone with a sword, whether that be a one-handed or two-handed sword, you are at a huge disadvantage, okay? And if you had any brains, you would run, okay? You would not try and fight someone when you are so outmatched in armaments. Oh, but skill, no, okay? No. There are some disparities in regards to the types of weapons that people use that can make skill almost useless, okay? Still, if someone might get lucky, they could win. But most of the time, no. Even if they're a master dagger fighter, if they're going up against someone with a long sword, generally, they'd be screwed. So yes, if elves could pick up this combative style and fight with it a lot more effectively than humans could and get the benefits over what humans could develop naturally, I actually think elves would be quite prominent dual wildesters. Applying the most descriptive word I can think of, of course. Now, of course, they wouldn't use this weapon set in every circumstance. Like, for instance, if you're going on a battlefield and you know the enemy has a lot of archers and you have to protect yourself against arrow fire, if you're not wearing heavy armor, you probably don't want another sword in your offhand. You're probably going to want a shield to protect yourself from those arrows. But in many other circumstances, I think dual wielding would be a very favored option for many elven warriors or adventurers. And there you go. These are the medieval weapons that I feel elves would be more inclined to use based on the common or standard types of physical characteristics that we can infer from the many different types of elves and interpretations of elves in so many different fantasy genres. Settings, I mean, settings. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope to see you again. And until then, farewell.